As we approach the summer, the deadline for the acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft is drawing near. But this week it might have gotten the final blow. Let me explain. Hey guys, I'm Dame Zays from the Omnic Post. Last week I published a video in which I expressed my concerns about the situation at Blizzard, how talented people are leaving the company, and how that, on top of the human aspect, is going to affect the games that we love. Turns out you guys liked that video. And I want to thank you all for your lovely comments. You know, content creation can be lonely at times. And it always warms my heart when I see you guys are enjoying the content. So thank you again. Now, in that video I said that in case that the deal with Microsoft fails, that issue I was talking about is going to get a lot worse. Because a good deal of employees at Blizzard are kind of waiting to see what fresh wind that Microsoft deal is going to bring. And if it turns out that that fresh wind is still that same foul tasting gas, burst from the rotting corporate bowels at Activision Blizzard, well, people are going to bail. They're going to spray some Febreze and then they're going to bail. Last week I said that I would be very surprised if this deal does not land. Because too many important people, too much money is involved. A whole society is rigged to favor money. It's called capitalism. Which in general can be uh, rather worrying. But in this case it would actually benefit a lot of people. Let me put it this way. It is always a bad idea to push someone from a boat. Unless that boat is on fire. Then you're saving lives. And Activision Blizzard is on fire. It's one of those smelly fires where you're actually wondering if they're, they're burning human hair. Or manure. I, I don't know what's going on with me today. Toxic gas, manure. I, I'm very sorry. But back to the topic, it seems I underestimated Sony. This week the CMA in the UK, which is the Competition and Markets Authority, has blocked the 69 million acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. Because they are too worried that Microsoft might become too strong in the cloud gaming space. And that it would limit innovation and the choice for UK gamers. What? But let me unwrap this. I mean, a lot of people say the CMA is just doing the job. Maybe. Fine. But I find it rather funny that those regulators that are always down talking the game industry suddenly are worried about the gamers. And putting Blizzard under Microsoft would hinder innovation? Okay, look, I don't want to be that cynical ass. I'll leave that to the regulators of the world. I just feel like the things that they're saying don't make any sense. Cloud gaming is a fata morgana. I mean, there's a lot of people talking about it. But it doesn't really exist, does it? There's so many companies that tried Google on Stadia back in 2019 at GDC. I was there and I was already wondering at that point how long it would take before it crashed. It took them three years. Three years later they had to shut it down because it's not feasible, it's not working. And I don't think it's going to be feasible in the next five to ten years. On top of that I have a really hard time wrapping my head around how much value Activision Blizzard adds to that whole cloud story. I mean how is it different from them adding the content to a console. You know what I think happened here is that they don't like Microsoft's Game Pass. And they kind of hinted at it in the report. They're afraid that Microsoft would slap all of their games into that Game Pass. That they would make them exclusive and then raise the price. To be honest, for anybody that buys more than one game every three to four months, that Game Pass, it's a pretty good deal. A little too good, to be honest. But don't tell Microsoft. I don't think they're aware. I don't think they know. Now seriously, that price is bound to go up one day. It's a trap that you can smile from miles away. At that point consumers will have to make a choice. Does this new price that they added still add enough value? And if it turns out that they make all of the games that they acquired over the last few years exclusives on that game pass, well, that would be a d move. But that's exactly why they have been in talks with other platforms to make deals. To make sure that these games will still be published for the foreseeable future. Now, they're not talking about forever, like... Uh, 10 years max. But over the last few months they made a lot of these agreements with a lot of these companies. Except Sony. Sony did not want to negotiate. Because they know that that game pass is so good that it is even going to slap them when they still can publish those same games. They're not interested in having those same games on their platform. They're interested in destroying Microsoft Xbox while the game pass. So instead of countering Microsoft with innovation, like that report said, they're going this route. They're going to try and take it down. These guys are not worried about us gamers, they're worried about their wallet, just like Microsoft. They're all the same. But the thing is, if the CMA would point directly at the Game Pass, it would smell like Sony for days. Everybody would be like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> See what they did? It's not good for the credibility of the CMA. So they wrapped it in something that sounds fancy. 
Cloud gaming. Yeah, cloud gaming is the biggest joke in the gaming industry. But anyways, good luck with that. But how does PlayStation get this pull with the CMA? Well, PlayStation CEO is actually British, Jim Ryan. And he has a lot of connections, a lot of pull within those circles in Britain. And when I say pull, I mean, yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know how it goes in those circles. Some good lobbying, a lot of money, some fancy dinners, and there you go. Look, in the end, this is all corporate politics. It's two giants clashing with each other. And both of them have secret agendas. Both of them are not showing the true face. But as I said at the start of this video, this deal between ABK and Microsoft would actually have helped all those people at Blizzard and the games that came out of those studios. Hence all of the players that play those games. But I do agree that the cost of this needs to be kept at check. And that's why they had all these meetings with their competitors. For the Sony fans, Jim and his friends are fighting the good fight. But he and PlayStation are doing the same thing Microsoft does. They just, instead of buying the bigger studios, they're buying a lot of smaller studios. But what pisses me off the most is that they restrict some of their bigger partners that they don't want to pay for from publishing on Microsoft platforms, well on Xbox specifically. One of them is Square Enix, who makes Final Fantasy. I mean, those are not small players anymore. They don't buy them, they just restrict them, which is the same negative effect without doing the investment and putting up the money and making sure that those games get made. I mean, they definitely forked over some money. Square Enix is not just going to kind of bend over and go, yeah, sure. But they don't take any of the risk. Microsoft at least kind of puts up their own money, which they have a lot of, and shows some ownership. Literally. All Sony did was give him a briefcase, three family packs of Snickers, and a picture of a cat wrestling a chihuahua. I don't know. I wasn't there. In any case, there's a lot going on there, and all we can do is watch. And it's not looking good. Microsoft and Activision Blizzard are appealing the decision. They are talking smack, they are rolling their muscles, they're even using some threatening language against the UK. <laughs> but from what I've read, winning an appeal is near impossible because that would kind of crumble the foundations of the CMA. So this whole circus, everything that they're doing, the flexing and whatnot, might just be a performance they're putting up for the stakeholders because otherwise their share prices would collapse. I've also seen people making claims that the UK government would step in to overrule the decision by the CMA because they are dependent on Microsoft for a lot of their cybersecurity and whatnot. But I don't know. This isn't a James Bond movie, so... In theory, it can happen, but I think they're going to wait for the decision of the EU and the US, which is going to be all round up by the end of August. And I also think that the EU and the US might take this decision of the CMA within their own decision making. I don't know. I have no idea. That is kind of hard to predict. So either this is game over for Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, or we're going to see something very impressive, something we've not seen before. Or not a lot at least. Either way, people are losing sleep over this. Except Bobby Kotek. <laughs> no. He is sleeping very well. Upside down though. I mean Activision Blizzard is going to get 3 billion dollars just if the deal breaks off. They don't have to do anything for that. If it's a, a no-go, they get 3 billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, Bobby will be happy. And the people at Blizzard, I can't put to words how bad I, I feel for them. I mean, this would be bad news. I at least hope that it triggers some change in the company. That's all I can say. At this point, I don't even have a question for you guys. So, um, tell me your favorite platform exclusive game. Let me know in the comments below. Join me during my streams on twitch.tv slash and make sure to subscribe for more updates on Overwatch.